Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow Jason Doyle dealing with some Covid chaos in Ireland. Plus we go south, down to the Dark Continent, and follow a promising blesbok hunt. Jason is on a family farm in Ireland where high levels of crows and jackdaws have been a growing concern to the owner. The weather isn't promising good conditions, but protecting the herd of cows from potential infection is more important than getting a bit wet. We're in a secret location. Um, <laughs> no, we're quite near the coast, as you can see. The um, farmer had given us a call a couple of days ago. Um, crows have been, well, the rooks really have been building up steadily, eating calf meal, and they can eat quite a lot of money's worth of meal. And, and defecating in the calf food and stuff like that, chance of spreading disease, so he's asked us to come down and, and thin them out. Um, we're just in the middle of the harvest, so it's unusual that there's such a number of them building up here. But um, obviously it's the, it's the best pickings in the area, so um, not many stirring yet, but it's early, they've just fed the calves. And um, the farmer's going to bring us out some bales, put in the field to use as a hide, and we'll get set up and get shooting within the next half an hour. It's all hands on deck to build two makeshift hides for Jason and his friend Stephen. It's a simple hide, it'll do well enough for, for puppers here today. Yeah. They're used to seeing the bales from feeding on, so it's nothing on your unusual at home. With the hide set, Jason prepares his kit of a Browning Phoenix semi-automatic and Ely Hawk cartridges and makes sure he's safe with some trusty hearing protection and Oakley shooting glasses. As the first pests arrive though, Jason is distracted by the landscape. It's quite a nice view. Yeah, lovely isn't it? That's sort of the line Stephen was expecting them to be coming. Right, yeah. If you it's get them regularly cute. coming that way you could sort of wait. Yeah. And, and just shoot them. His focus returns to the task in hand, just in the nick of time to take out the first bird of the day. Though the numbers aren't great to begin the day, Jason's shooting is on point and the clicker starts to climb. There's a good build up of crawls in a couple of, couple of minutes. Ooh. Just after lunchtime, the birds start arriving in bigger numbers, which means more action for Jason, but he remains patient on some birds to ensure clean and considerate kills. Eventually. <laughs> Despite the sky starting to fill up with troublesome birds, Jason takes a moment to check in with the shooting show Twitter and Facebook pages.
and he's busy Facebooking. Positive numbers after a slow start is a good sign, especially when the crows start coming in bigger numbers. Oh. <laughs> nice one. Oh, that's picking up a bit. I was a bit disappointed. Yeah, it is, isn't it? A bit disappointed with the first 45 minutes. Yeah. But it was 2 o'clock when Stephen was here yesterday. Right, yeah. So we've thir 33 down. Yeah. The kills keep coming and Jason barely has time to re-energise during the second half of the day. He's hitting plenty of targets but he's grateful for the Browning's three shot capacity on some of the trickier birds. After Stephen misses with two of his shots from a different hide, Jason is there to clean up the kill, proving that on these occasions two guns is certainly better than one. With shots hitting the target on more occasions than not, even the camera equipment has to look out. Three, three shells short of 100 for 48 crows. The average isn't very good. <laughs> I might just make two to one if I can shoot two more with this magazine. The rain starts to set in and the call from Stephen's hide calls it quits for the afternoon. You gonna get away? But Jason spots a final few crows making a last ditch attempt for the feed. We haven't crashed it yet anyway. Give me a few minutes, I'll take it in the fence. I know. <laughs> there's, not, there's no good tire. There's, there's a... one! Oh, there she <laughs> is. Oh! He's a jeepers. <laughs> oh, he's alright, he's, he's only going into land to feed. Look, there's no bother on him. No earplugs in either. <laughs> it's actually going to get heavier. With more rain expected, the team set about picking up their quarry for the day, with a positive result for the farmer despite the rain. 60 picked, 68 clicked. And with with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> been cracking there for the on the ducks. <laughs> yeah. Slightly damp. Ah, who left the door open? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had we were down here yesterday around dinner time, and there was five, six hundred crows eating from the calf chocks, but weather wasn't with us today at all. Um, we got hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes of good weather in the morning 
Between two hides we've shot about 90 crows, we've picked 60, 70 of them. Um, but the weather has just come in very, very strong now, um, very wet, windy as well. And it's just not worth getting any wetter for a few more crows that we might get. Just before they head inside for a warm drink, Stephen spots a further pest control opportunity near the straw hide he was using. So um, yeah, we're going to call it quits for today. Head home, get all the gear dried out and try for some pigeons tomorrow. The weather is giving good forecast for tomorrow morning. So we'll get out early and um, give it a go. Jason Doyle dealing with the crows there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, brought to you by gunbid.co.uk. UK shooting representatives have been called into action to defend and educate the general public about firearm licensing laws. Members of Basque and known shooters like Mike Yardley have appeared on regional and national television and radio following the death of a shooting coach in the USA while teaching a nine-year-old how to use a machine gun. During nearly every interview, they have had to explain the vast differences between gun laws here and in America. Simon Clark of Basque said, striving for balanced reporting of shooting in the media is one of Basque's key objectives and an often endless task. The death of a shooting instructor in Arizona was a terrible incident, but we will always stand up for shooting and explain how it works in the UK. While the glorious 12th ushered in the start of the grouse season, today marks the first shooting day for a number of other species. September the 1st is grey partridge open season throughout the UK, along with duck and goose, red-legged partridge, golden plover and common snipe in Northern Ireland. If you haven't booked your game days yet, time is running out, so contact your agency as soon as possible. Basque has advised members to renew their shotgun or firearms licences as soon as possible, as 2015 is considered one of the peak years for renewals. The organisation wants to ensure members are prepared and send in their applications 12 weeks before their certificate is due to expire. Basque's Bill Harriman said it is the individual's responsibility to ensure their certificates are renewed. Do not wait for police reminder letters. For more information, members can call 01244 573 010. The Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust is appealing to shooters for help in counting woodcock at dusk when males are searching for mates. Since 2008, there has been an average decline of 2.5% each year, and the GWCT is looking to develop a more comprehensive national picture of the enigmatic bird. It is asking for people to make three counts between the 1st of May next year and the 30th of June, to send in data of how many woodcock people shoot, and to send it shot woodcock so the bodies can be analysed. For more information, visit the link on screen now. Park Lodge Shooting School has launched its first Yorkshire Schools Clay Shooting Challenge. The event will take place on Friday the 19th of September and is open to individuals and teams of novice and semi-experienced shooters from around Yorkshire to take part. Tom Baston, the owner of Park Lodge, said there are some popular schools competitions in other parts of the country and we thought it would be great if Yorkshire had its own event. For more information on how to enter, contact Joe at Park Lodge on 01405 764 500. And finally, the ALS Motor Neurone Disease Ice Bucket Challenge reached the Blaze Publishing offices last week, as executive producer Wes Stanton was challenged by Derek Edgar of Edgar Brothers. Wes was keen to increase awareness for the disease, as well as the Royal Marines Charitable Trust. He and shooting show director Peter Carr have been raising money for the Marines ahead of completing a 30-mile yomp across the Scottish Highlands while wearing a £40 backpack. 
If you would like to support either of them, visit one of the links on screen now. That was the Shooting Show News. Hunting Africa is all about variety. Today we're leaving the inland copies and heading to flatter terrain just in from the coast. This is agricultural land and we'll be shooting on an area next to a dairy farm that's often used for grazing. It's also home to large herds of springbok and blesbok and it's time to thin their numbers one by one. Forget walking and stalking, we're doing this the traditional way. We'll be waiting at one edge of the ground while the blesbok are gently moved towards our position. When they're in range, Lana will instruct Anka which one to take. It might seem easy, but we're not far from a road in a populated area, and we have to be absolutely sure of our safety angles at all times. Nothing is left to chance. You see, that's the the wonder of, of South Africa. There's so much different terrain. You, you The first couple of days you guys had the, the mountainous terrain with the deep valleys and stuff, and with a blessed buck you had a flat area basically with, with very little cover, and uh, which makes it a total different hunt. Um, there's not much area to stalk uh, closer to the animal, so you have to, to work with a plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the, the woolly last one is a male? Oh no, now it's the second one, the darker one. Uh, last one on the right side? Yeah. Uh, the female and the young one. Ah, okay. The way it begins. Apart from range and quarry selection, we also have to remember that the wind is up and could spoil everything if it changes direction. Then there's a lack of cover to break up our outlines, and the matter of picking a clear shot from our low position. Sitting still has never been this hard. There's an old Blesbok ram at number one on the shooting list today, but it's the Springbok who come into range first. Still, we sense our looks about to change. After one hour, um, a big group of Blesboks were coming and I, can, I had the, shot, uh, the chance to shot a big um, uh, blast box. That one that's in front of the pack. Okay. Looks like the biggest rain. You can get him. Just wait for him to stand still. Alright. Okay, there they go, there they go. Okay. Standing broadside. Yeah. Oh boy, okay, wait, 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 wait. There they go, there they go. Um, and he took off again. Alright. I'm just going to wait for them to turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The herd runs on, but thankfully, seconds later, they stop and give us a second chance. It's standing broadside. Just check, right? Okay, if you're ready, take it. It's a clear hit, but the ram is still up. Watching through the Swarovski binoculars, we see it follow the rest of the herd. Hit just too far back to drop where it stood. Lano decides we need to break cover and follow it up on foot, just in case everything hasn't gone to plan. What looked like a smallish stalking ground suddenly seems huge. Two foot stalkers are no match for a herd of fleet flooded blesbok. They easily give us the run around. But the shot ram is no longer with them. It's slowing down and we soon catch up for Anka to deliver the decisive shot. It runs again, but this time only for a few yards. The shot was indeed spot on. At last we've got our ram. Well done. Thank you. Very nice old ram. Yeah. You've seen the white bases and the thick bases. So the older they get, the whiter they get. And you see the crack in the wall there. Okay. All of old age. So. Very, very, very nice old ram. Well done. Thank you. Good. Okay, we're going to load. Approaching the carcass, we confirmed that it was just the right specimen to take. Oh, no, this, this really and it was a, a special one which I shot. It was a really old one. You can see it on the white horns and the damages on the horns. So I'm really proud of this trophy. That comes with the with with job that we do to make sure that you uh, know which animal to look at to give you an idea on the blessed buck for example both male and female has horns um, the female has much thinner horns thinner bases and normally they just black dark in color where your males have a much thicker base and the older your blessed buck rams get 
the whiter the basis is. The, the rings on the horns will start getting white, but if you've got a, a pure white base on it, then you know you've got a really old ram, like Anka shot a, a very good old age ram, a lot of white on the horns, and the one horn was cracked from, from aging and, and also from fighting and working with the horns. So yeah, beautiful trophy, yeah. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And remember, BASC is the voice of shooting. Looking after your sport and looking after you. If you're not a member, please join now.